Um, my name is Paul Didier. I'm a solution architect in our Internet of Everything Vertical Solutions Group. Cisco has been involved from pretty much right at the beginning of the Industrial Internet Consortium. We see this as our, our next major you know, wave and, and, uh, of innovation and where we're going to get our growth for the next five to ten years. So. Well, let, let's go backwards a little bit and, and tell me, when was your aha moment for the Internet of Things? Um, it must have been about uh, three years ago now. Um, I had visited a, uh, a very good friend and customer um, at a major um, auto manufacturer in Detroit. And we were talking about, um, you know, his use of, of standard networks, Ethernet and Wi-Fi and all of that. And he basically kind of came uh, out with a conclusion, we really do need to move to using this technology everywhere in our production facilities. And for, for you, Cisco, this is going to be, you know, or for networking companies, this is going to be a, you know, big opportunity. We're going from, right now we use 1,000, 5,000 nodes per major production facility to, you know, 30 to 50,000 end nodes. It's a factor of 10. It's a big increase in terms of, uh, of um, connected things. Um, is basically what he's talking about. And so about a month later, my aha moment came together where we were back at a, a major event in the industry and uh, one of the other auto uh, makers was presenting a, a senior exec. And he was basically kind of going on about, yes, we are really happy about this partnership, we're happy about Cisco, and we're happy about this concept, the internet in, in the industrial space. But for him, it was like, I want to make my whole production much, much more flexible, standardize everything that's going on there. I want to bring in my partners, let them take on more of the risk, get into an operational expense kind of model. Um, I don't want to have to build all the capabilities in my, you know, my workforce on how the machines work and all that. I want to leave that to the guys who already have it. So that was kind of like that aha moment. It's like this really is uh, changing all the things about uh, uh, you know how we think about you know building these big production facilities, how we think about building you know all the things that we consume. It was uh, it was a really that that aha moment. It's good for Cisco is where it started, or it's good for you know IT companies, but it's also really good for you know the industrial companies uh, from machine builders all the way to the big guys who, you know, make the finished products. What have you seen from a best practice point of view organizationally? Yeah. So I see that the best IT organizations in, on this um, are starting to uh, morph and become kind of like setting up teams either under them directly or taking on teams uh, directly under OT management, but basically working with, with folks that are, you know, directly um, responsible for, for working with and collaborating with the OT side. Um, developing, you know, uh, doing, um, you know, setting up policies, setting up guidelines, setting up technology, but really focusing on um, collaborating with their OT side. The ones that don't, um, it's kind of funny, we've, we've seen it come up, they, they get, it's not, they get outsourced, but the OT guys will make a decision to buy a service that basically includes all of the IT technology baked right into it, and, and that's it. They'll, they're like, you know, I, this is a huge impact to my business, and if they're not in talking to the OT side of the house, um, they're, they're kept out of it. They will become a, uh, you know, the IT organizations could be just caretakers and, uh, and other stuff. We, we see that in the budget allocations. IT gets less and less budget. It's being allocated to the functional, the OT side of the house. They spend a fair amount of it on, on IT. The question is, do they spend it with their own IT organizations or, or some sort of service provider who's baking it into something bigger? A good example of this, I use this analogy a lot, but a, a good analogy of, of this mismatch of, of uh, objectives is, is something called CIA. Um, in security, there's three main um, characteristics you're always concerned about. Um, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And typically, if you talk to an IT guy, those were the order of his you know, objectives when it comes to security. Confidentiality first. I don't want my IP 
leaking or going somewhere. Integrity of the information, it needs to be what, it, you know, what it's supposed to be. And then lastly is the availability. They'll shut down you know, their pause systems or something else before, you know, before uh, a lot of other things if they think they're getting hacked or some other things or you know, there's, a, there's a virus in the data center. They'll turn off the email systems, all of that. On well, the operational side, it, it, those uh, um, objectives are uh, absolutely reversed. First and foremost is availability. I got to keep running. I got to keep making money. Got to keep making, you know, the the my my product. Availability is key. In a lot of these places, it's like uh, uh, it, it's a, availability is is everything. Uh, you know, uh, there's life and Big other kind of well. yeah. Uh, other downsides. So availability is always their number one. Integrity is really, really important in creeping up there. Uh, they do need to make sure that their systems are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Stuxnet was about integrity. The, 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 you know, the drives and the motors doing one thing but telling all the operators they're doing something else. Um, so integrity is really important to them. They're, they're starting to pick that up. But confidentiality is probably their, you know, in, in terms of the three, the least of their concerns. They're usually not concerned. Hey, this guy's reading the temperature sensors. You know that stuff goes stale so quickly. There are some parts of their, you know, their their batches or their re recipes or some other things. There usually is some some core, you know, IP that they're concerned about. But in general, they're more concerned about the availability than the integrity than the uh, and last, you know, the the confidentiality. So those are the kind of things that really. You know, once you get the those those kind of changes going on with the IT guys, um, things move a lot better. But that comes with working closely, collaborating more closely. You know, creating these mixed teams with the operational sides. What is the role of the IIC? What role does the IIC have in setting have in setting architectural requirements and standards in the industrial internet? Yep. So if you kind of go out there and take a look at things, I've, I've been involved with IT my, my whole you know 25 year career. Um, the last 10 focused more on this operational side. Um, but they, ha they don't collaborate in a lot of um, spaces together. Um, you know, the, there's the IEEE, there's the IETF, and there's all these other um, IT related consortiums and stuff. Um, and rarely do you see, you know, the big industrial companies playing in some of that. Some of the very basics, you know, in some of the IEEE, you, you'll see a lot, some of their involvement. But that's a, with a mixture of a lot of other folks. So the IIC's role was really to, to uh, incubate this IT and OT in some ways. Bring them together, talk, get, you know, let's, let's do some work together in test beds. Uh, let's set some reference architectures. Um, let's go out and pull the IT and the OT folks together to kind of collaborate on what we what we think is is going to be critical for the industrial internet. Start giving some you know identifying gaps and identifying where additional work needs to be done. Um, we want to reuse as much as possible that's out there in in these various places. But if something you know in the security space or some of the networking or some of the application um, standards need to be enhanced for the industrial side, and they will, because it's, it's different requirements. Um, let's go identify that together, and then go you know, collaborate in the appropriate standards groups or uh, you know, open source groups or whatever other consortiums are out there. But the IIC is really kind of focused on, on, on the uh, uh, innovation and incubation, and then identifying where things need to happen, so bringing in university research folks, bringing in the, the major industrial players, bringing in the major IT players um, is, is, you know, we're trying to bring all those folks together in a, in a collaborative manner to, to point where we need to, you know, take the rest of the industry. So, and uh, to date it's, it's working out pretty well. We're up to about 130 uh, in within a year, 100, you know, 130 companies um, based on the five founding members. So it um, seems like a lot of people are very interested, understand the problem, and, and want to collaborate together on it.